Today's podcast is brought to you by strongheartacademy.com, where no heart is no victory. We are also brought to you by BJJ to go. If you want to build your game and learn jiu-jitsu, go to bjjtogo.com. Third thing we're brought to you by is rat bat. You got rats? Want to kill bats? Kill them with a rat bat. Fourth thing we're brought to you by is hot dog flavored water ingredients. If you want to add it to your smoothie, hot dog flavor ingredient. Okay, it's been a minute. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Latimus Malin. So, uh, Latimus was my dad's friend that I grew up with. Um, the funny thing is his name, you know, when I was a kid, we just called him Laddie. And, um, and I never... I just never thought about that was that was a weird name. I've never met anyone since named Latimy, uh, Laddie, or Latimus. Um, and I remember <clears throat> when I was like a teenager, I finally asked like, where did the name come from? And then I was told that I think Laddie told me that his mom named him after the doctor that uh, brought him into this world. So when he was born, the doctor was named Latimus. His mom was so happy that she named him. Latimus. I think he was like a foreign doctor or something. I don't know. But it's a strange name. And uh, I don't even know how to spell it. Um, I think sometimes I would spell it L-A-D-D-I or sometimes I would spell it L-A-D-D-Y. Uh, but for those who know you know me, like I barely spell, you know, it's Todd. I've known for 20 years. I, I He reminds me that I spell his name wrong all the time. It's supposed to be two Ds. I always give it one D. Sorry. I don't know. Terrible at spelling. But um, it is a strange name. And uh I just was so part of our family that I just never thought about it, ever. So I grew up with him. How did I grow up with him? He was my dad's friend from Pennsylvania. They grew up, um, I think it's the Appalachian Mountains in Pennsylvania, a small town. Um, and I think technically they were outside of the town even. And so the town is like a 500 people of Troy, Pennsylvania, but they were like outside of the town. And I think they met in like third grade okay my dad's like 67 now I think um and um or 66 maybe and so they met in third grade and my dad moved out here and teenager and then laddie came out uh out later um and so he's known my dad since they were you know what nine years old eight years old probably and then they had their friendship all the way until uh recently and um so he just was always around the house. He was almost, I almost saw him more than my family, my uncles. Um, and my dad's, a lot of my uncles lived in town, but we, we saw Laddie all the time. Um, when I was really small, you know, he we used to go riding motorcycles with us. And this is so old, so long ago in the 80s where you had three-wheelers. And so I was riding a three-wheeler at like six years old. And I remember one time we were at this place called Castle Rock and um, he was just always fun and, uh, we were racing through the desert and I think we went and it was like a wash. He didn't know, he didn't see, he had to go down. I, I don't know if he tried to jump it or what, but he went sh- like f- fast as he could and then fell in the wash. And then the peg of where you put your feet on it went into his leg and then the wheel spun and it ripped this long, like, open bleeding everywhere and then we had to figure out like how do we get him out of the desert and then um i think i even drove back with him i ended up putting him in the back of a truck because he had to keep his legs straight um it bleeding everywhere and um i remember him laughing and he was like this was funniest thing and it freaked me out as a kid because i was like there's blood everywhere and i'm not afraid of blood or everything but like when you're like maybe seven, six, seven, eight, somewhere around there, you know, it was kind of a, a emergency, you know, we had to get him to the hospital and I don't remember much after that. He had a scar though, that never went away from almost his knee all the way to his ankle, just big, giant, thick purple scar from, from that. But the, the craziest thing for me was just laughing, like 
you know, most people be screaming. Ah. I don't remember that. I remember him laughing and making jokes and stuff. And this was Laddie. Like, um, since I ever known him, he was always say crazy, crazy things and um, inappropriate things. Always inappropriate. And he's one of the people that we get in our lives that don't follow the normal society rules of like what you should say and shouldn't say. You know, it's like in church, he would cuss. He'd go to church and, and swear like that. He'd say, damn it, or like shit or whatever. And um, we're like, laddie, you're in church. Like, you know, he just never, I don't know if it's that part of his brain just to have a filter or what. You know, we'd have, when I did landscaping, he would work with us and um, we have these really wealthy, wealthy clients. Like, you know, these are multi-million dollar houses. These are like affluent people. They went to the right colleges. They did the right things. They're just very high class, I guess. And Laddie would swear around them. You know, he would just, he was had a wild mouth. And he would always, you know, he'd go over, and my mom loved him too, but he would say crazy stuff to my mom just to get her going, just to get her like, yeah, just to get her going, you know. Um, and it was it was fun to watch. He was always fun to be around. I never met anyone that didn't like Laddie. Um and just the wildness of him. And again, we, we certain people, even in society that become famous, you know, like Charles Barkley, you know, he says wild things and it's like, but you take it as honesty and not and not malicious. And so I never took Laddie talking trash or saying crazy things or even racist things. Um, and and uh, I never took it as like he actually didn't like a race or anyone like other people, you know. He would just, that was just his way, I guess. And um, and I have examples of that where, like, saying racist things to that race, but they talk trash back to him, and they almost respected him. Um, so so when we did landscaping, there was, there was, we worked with a ton of Mexicans, and, um, you know, they barely spoke English, a lot of them, and this is in the 80s and 90s, and super common, and, um, and, uh, you know, these are people, they're, 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 they're poor, poor people that came to the United States to make a better living. So, but then, you know, the wealthy people of Mexico don't come to America or even now it's not even Mexico. Most of the migrants are from like El Salvador, all these countries that are disaster. And so they're working their way up or Venezuela even. Anyway, in Mexico, you know, if you're wealthy, there's plenty of wealthy people that have, you know, giant companies and, um, they don't, you know, they don't come here. They're not migrants here, you know? So these are people like farmhands, you know, they have a farm where they're from, ranches from they're from, they're almost caballeros, you know, the cowboys. And um, so they they were fine with talking trash. And sometimes like when you work with a bunch of men, especially construction, anyone that could tell you that's a, you know, blue collar, they call it. It's just, there's no HR department, you know, there's no HR department. And so you could say wild things out there and no one's going to, no one's going to take you to HR. Nobody's going to sue you. Um, it's a very free, um, free. You just feel a lot freer. That's one thing. When I when I worked indoors, um, when I did have an office job for like two seconds, I did one year, and it was for like a bank, and um, I just didn't feel free. I felt like I was going to offend people. And this is, you know, a long time ago before like the wokeness or whatever you want to call it. Um, I just, you know, I don't want to offend people. Sometimes it's just like, there's more women around. So you're being coarse and, um, you know, a woman might take offense to that or something like that. I, I, I get that. But, um, anyway, the point is like when you're out and about doing blue collar work, it's just a bunch of dudes being dudes. And, um, it's, it behooves you to learn how to like talk trash. You have to like, you have to like verbally defend yourself. And people respect you for it. And so if you don't do that, they will pick it. There's actually a chapter in Jordan Peterson's book about this, of like working on a railroad line and he, and the guy, they talk about that they used to make fun of him and then he the guy took it personally. And so so instead of like, you know, they go, oh, Mike, Baldy, you know, that someone was calling me a Baldy. I'm like, yeah, it's a solar panel for uh, a wrestling machine, you know, or something like that. Like you just got to go with it and then, then you have to do a quip back. And it's usually not like a personal thing. Like very few times when you're 
talking trash, you don't actually uh, mean those things. It's just, it's a way of like trust, I think. You, you develop a trust. Um, so people trusted Laddie because the honesty and then tech and, and knowing that he didn't have malicious intent. So all that being said, we worked with a bunch of Mexicans and, um, and every morning he would come into always also, he was a early morning person. He went to bed super early and got up super early. And so I'm groggy in the morning. It's like four 30 in the morning. And he goes, Buenos dias, shitheads every day. That was the greeting that that we got. Everyone that was working, we'd meet at a yard. My dad's had a property called the yard, and a whole bunch of different landscapers had property um, trucks in there. Even had plumbers and electricians. So there's people, a lot of people busy in the morning. They're leaving. They park their vehicles there from where they live, and they just rent from my dad. And then the their business, their small business, would go out. You know, but you would see a lot of different people in the morning. Everyone got the same greeting in the morning. Buenos dias, shitheads. And the Mexicans thought it was the funniest sh shit ever. And he would also call them beaners all the time. He'd be like, what are you beaners? And I was telling my friend today, like, you don't hear that that word anymore because it's racist. It's a super racist thing to say. He's like, oh, uh, Mexicans eat a lot of beans. Well, this is true. But it's, it, you know, it almost sounded like a mean thing to say. But it was never like that with him. He just, he liked to fucking fuck with people. He just liked to mess with people. And they would call him Sapo. And one of the funniest thing is, I spoke Spanish and none of the white boys knew, knew what the hell they were talking about. But Sapo is a frog. And so they would call him frog. And because he looked like a frog a little bit, he was not the, the most handsome man in the world. And maybe that's why he was so funny and so witty um, because he was just a, a, a uh, ugly looking dude and he had like no chin he had this tiny chin and then he had like fat fat from like here to like his chest and then his eyes were like squished together and he had tiny eyes together um, and he had a weird kind of beard always um, and his hair was just kind of put back but no you know not much to it and he always wore shorts no matter how cold it freaking was it could be 30 degrees that fool was wearing shorts and um, and no ass. And so they also said, like, he had no ass. So you're a frog. You're like a frog in pants or you're a frog in shorts because you have no ass. So he had no ass and he's kind of barrel chested too. He always had kind of a he, – he was like fat but athletic-ish, um, you know, and he drank a ton of beer. And, and so they called him frog and he called him, you know, he called him all kinds of words. And – um and everyone had nicknames, and, and so, uh, who knows, I don't remember ever getting a nickname, maybe I wasn't cool enough, but, you know, we had a guy named Speedy, and so Speedy Gonzalez, right, but he took pride in the fact, we call him Speedy because he was fast, he worked fast, he did a good job, and so it was like a, it wasn't a mean thing, it wasn't like, oh, you're Mexican, Speedy Gonzalez, we didn't go like, oh, Speedy Gonzalez, like this, we just called him Speedy, hey, Speedy, and to this day, I still call him Speedy. And um, he always takes that as with pride because it's like, yeah, I work, I do a good job, and I get it done fast. I don't goof off. I'm, I get my done work, my work done. So it was never like racist. It was just, um, yeah, it's just a nickname. I've noticed this with other cultures too. Um, sometimes the Brazilians, you know, if you talk about, heard about bochecha, it just means big cheese, you know. And I have some Navajo friends too, and, they would have like they would always tell me like your nickname is not a cool name. It's like big nose or big ears or whatever. And again, it's just um, you could take that stuff as a badge of honor, or you can take offense and choose to be offended by it. Um, and usually, it's never, you know, the people that you don't like, you don't give names. You know I mean so? You also got to think of that, which I didn't get a name from. I don't think from them, but no, they just call me Mikey. That's true. They call me Mikey. Um, I never thought about that. I guess they do. They were the only people that ever called me Mikey because I was so much younger than everybody. So I started when I was a little kid. And so anyone was around, I was always Mikey. But, um, and actually, Laddie used to call me Mikey. And that's probably why everyone else called me Mikey because he knew me since I was born, basically. Um, but he was just always fun. And we always had fun with him. Always afraid of snakes. And so one time when we were 
um, ride motorcycles. We used to go to this place, and I think it's called Castle Rock, and I don't know to this day where it's at, but there'd be water going through that the wash. So maybe it's like the Salt River. I don't know where we were at. Or maybe out by like um, Cat, uh, Bartlett, maybe? I don't know. But we would cross this river sometimes, and I guess he was... We're at the truck and we parked near it and he was pissing like near the river or into the river and he pissed on a snake and he comes running out and he pissed all over himself and it was just hilarious because he's afraid of snakes and he pissed on a rattlesnake and um, luckily, you know, they didn't bite him in the junk, but he was like, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen is just him running around, piss all over himself. And um, another time when we were... Um, working the mexican guys i work with found a snake and a lot of times we kill the snakes because um i like you know bull snakes i would find with but rattlers you know you, you had customers in their backyard and and they're not killing a rattler themselves but they're worried that like their kids will walk back there and get bit on accident you know so a lot of times rattlesnakes bite you um just because they don't know you're there and you hit a bush and just they get freaked out they get scared and they don't you didn't hear them rattling or whatever so anyway we'd kill rattlesnakes if they're on the property with a shovel, just bop them on the head. And so I'm not afraid of rattlesnakes. Um, but uh, we put it in his lunchbox. Every day he brought a lunchbox. And so that was part of the uh, work or two. Uh, I always got like a hot dog at Circle K because um, I was never ma- got up early enough to make my stupid lunch because I was young and dumb. Um, but the Mexicans, their, their, their wives or their girlfriends would make them burritos and they would stack the burritos and you'd have probably like 10 burritos They're probably like eh, this wide maybe and um maybe this long so really like narrow things sometimes it'd be hot dogs or they would put beans in there they would put um i've had all kinds of hot do- uh, bur- burritos i love their burritos sometimes like mexicans were like i didn't like this and i was like man you, you should tell your wife you just cook good, good cook but then we would share so we would share our lunch with them they would share our, their lunch with me you know laddie always had goodies like um chips you know like he would have lays chips or whatever and they all they ever got was like just a burrito and you know and they would get like a drink during the day in the morning when we go to like a gas station to fill up and so it was just a community way of eating with each other and um they got his they got his lunchbox they opened it up and they put the dead snake in his lunchbox he was pissed for quite a while at that one like um he he didn't he didn't not find that funny at all, but he freaked out. And then another time we put like a fake a fake rubber one in there too. He didn't find that funny either. But it was hus- hysterical, and we were all laughing. And um, those are kind of things I like, think you know you can't really do in an inside job. Have a dead rattlesnake that would definitely be a uh, HR call or whatever. But um, it was just fun, man, and, and um, it was fun to work with him. And then every day after work, he would drive to the, the liquor store, and um, it was owned by these Arabs, and um, I think they were actually Christian Arabs, but they were from, I think they were from Iraq. I ended up talking to him, but he would go, I'm going to go get it from the ragheads. You know, he would just say racist stuff. But when he would go to them too, he would talk to their daughter there and be nice, not like in a creepy way at all. The The dad would always be there, and then the daughter would sometimes work at the counter, and he would talk to them asking about their day and like every day he, so he supported their business you know but it was just he would definitely say some sort of like call you something you know he's gonna call you something and um and they loved him too but um he he would buy uh, a 30 pack of uh natty light so natural light which is he used to like cores and then he tried to save money by buying natural light which is even grosser and then he would also buy cigarettes. And I think he would buy like Indian brand or something. It was cheap cigarettes too. And I remember he used to do camels, I think. And then he ended up going back to like the cheap cigarettes, you know. And um, I think they were called American maybe. Maybe American. They had a, like a Native American like little symbol on them or something. But um, And then he would drink a full 30 pack. Sometimes he would stay at the yard. We go back to the yard, and we just hang out with Mexicans, and they would just sit and drink together for hours or whatever. And then I think he'd go to bed at like pass out at like eight o'clock. And in the winter, I think sometimes even earlier, like seven o'clock. Oh, the sun's down. He had like farmers' hours, and I think he kept that for like his whole life. 
Um, you know, and he did that for a long, long time, drinking a lot of beers and smoking a lot of cigarettes. And then he left my dad and he ended up working for Grand Canyon University. And um, and uh, I think he, they treated him pretty good. I think he even had like a little bit of retirement from there. He got ended up getting rheumatoid arthritis in his hands and you just couldn't grip, grab, grab anything anymore, you know. And I don't think he had to work hard when he was there, but like just the heat alone was starting to get to him. <clears throat> he ends up moving to Sholo, I think, with his sister um his mom passed away he lived with his mom forever um and uh actually you know like when i was really young he lived with his parents his dad was there and his mom and he had his own room um but his dad scared the crap out of me and uh i thought he was like a huge guy I found out later he was like tiny i think he was even a wheelchair i think he died of emphysema but he was this crazy old man that swore and just very loud and just always talking like but he was like a mean-spirited drunk. And um, I think my dad told me he was scared of him when he was a kid, too, because they grew up together. Uh, but his mom was like the sweetest lady in the world. She was so sweet. And she was a nurse. Uh, and then when she passed away, you know, he, he just he ended up selling his place. And then he moved in with his um, sister. And, um, and then not that long ago, they moved to south, like near Tucson, Marana, I think, area. And, um, or Casa Grande, something like that. And then maybe a month ago, my mom goes, Hey, laddie has cancer. And it's like, it's bad. It's like everywhere. It's like his whole body. And he was having trouble. You know, he was coming down Phoenix a lot and staying with my parents to the doctor. And it was like his arthritis stuff, I think, you know, and then out of nowhere, like he just gets checked for cancer and they did a, like a scan, a body scan. And apparently he just had it everywhere. He had it. Like in his lungs, he had it, um, yeah, his whole body had cancer. His brain, everything. He was like covered in cancer. And then uh, a week ago, my mom goes, hey, um, the laddie passed away. Did you know? I'm like, no, how would I know? You know? And so I guess he just went in and uh, couldn't breathe very well. So he went in and then he just never woke up, never came out of the hospital. Just died that day or whatever. Um and that was maybe a, a month after they found out that he had cancer everywhere. And he just was like, I'm going to fight it. But my mom said, oh, he's got cancer. It's just like, there's no way. It's stage four. Everything's it's, it's everywhere. So, and he was older. And he quit smoking, you know, quite a long time ago. And quit drinking, too, a long time ago. But, like, just the years of the damage, I think, caught up. And I don't think he ate well. Um, but uh, it, 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 and then... I guess they just, I think they cremated him. And then my parents said he didn't even do a service. And so I just want to talk today because I just want to get out there. I feel like maybe this is his service, you know, and none of his family will see this, but for me, it's his service. And so I wanted to have a little bit of bye, laddie, um, because I didn't get to see him at the end. That that bums me out um, because he's such a figure in my life. And so bye, laddie. So see you on the other side, brother. I loved you. And that's it. That's it for today. So hope it wasn't a W downer. I'm happy that he was in my life. Um, he gave me funny perspectives and say wild things. And um, I probably have a million other stories about Laddie, but that's good for today. Yep. Peace. <laughs> Let me talk for just a second, help me feel that sense of rhythm Find the meanings in our bearings and discover this position As a stage along the way, another rung to the ladder Either stalling or you're climbing and I'd rather be the ladder Instead of getting fatter, let the footsteps resume naturally